Hello, today we're building the foundation and the floor for a 4x8 lean-to shed. This is a perfect size shed if you have a small yard. Even though it's small in size, it has plenty of room for storing boxes, tools, or garden equipment. So I start off by locating the shed on the backyard. What's nice about a lean-to shed is that you can lean against pretty much anything. I chose to lean against the back of the house. You can also lean it against the garage or even a fence. Once you find out where you want to build the shed, survey the area and find the highest spot. This is where you're gonna start to build your foundation. To build the foundation, I'm gonna use concrete blocks and gravel. So I trace out the concrete block, clear about two or three inches of dirt. Then I brought in gravel, laid it down and started to level the concrete block. It does take some back and forth adding gravel as needed to make sure the blocks are leveled. But after you have the first block leveled, things will go smoother. One thing I learned is never to underestimate the amount of slope you're gonna have to work with. So right here, I'm gonna have at least 13 inches from the ground to get my shed leveled. So make sure to plan ahead and survey the area before you go to the store to buy your concrete blocks. I cleared off a leveled surface for my second block. Then I leveled it off with gravel. Once you have the block leveled, measure how much you need to create the foundation. These blocks come in either two or four inches thick. Knowing that you adjust the block height and place the additional blocks on top of it. This will probably take you multiple tries. It's a combination of making sure that the block is leveled and that it's leveled across both blocks. And next are the two foundation blocks on the front. For both of these, I measured them off four feet from the original two blocks, dig the dirt off and level them off with gravel. When all four blocks are leveled, I make final adjustments to each one of them, making sure they are square and the right distance away from each other. Now, when it comes to the foundation for the shed, your best approach is obviously to pour a concrete slab, but that does come with cost. Now, your second best approach will be to build a boxed in gravel pad. But that is a little pricey, not as much as the concrete option, but it is pretty labor intensive. Now, if you want to save money and time, your best option then will be to use concrete blocks. And I do use a fabric to prevent any vegetation to grow, which is unlikely, but it does help. And the gravel here is just an inch or so for drainage. That helps a bunch. And once you get to this point, you should be ready to frame your flooring. So let's get that going. To frame the floor of the shed, I'm going to be using all pressure treated lumber. I start by cutting off the corners of the four by four skid. This helps reduce the sharp edges and it's a nice touch whenever you need to move the shed. I place the 4x4 skids on top of the concrete blocks. Then I bring in the joist and space them out. I take a full piece of 2x6 lumber and cut it exactly to 8 feet long. Then I make a mark every 16 inches for the joists. Some people will frame the shed floor using 24 inch spacing. I prefer 16 inches on center and only takes one extra piece of lumber. Then it's time to attach the joist to the ledger board. I'm doing this a little different than normal. Usually, I'll lay all the joists on top of the skids and attach it that way. 
This time, because I have a lean to shed leaning against the house, I won't have any space to work on it. So then I attach the whole section of the joist to the ledger board and only then I slide that section over the skids. Now that I am able to work on the outer ledge, I attach the joist to the ledger board using 3 inch GRK structural screws. I first attach the two outer boards so I can work on squaring off the floor platform. To square off the floor, I measure from corner to corner, moving in and out the corners as I need. The goal is to get an equal distance on these corners, making the platform square. Once the box is square, I finish attaching the joist to the ledger boards. Then I drive a toenail screw on each bay securing the floor to the skids. Now you may wonder why do we build sheds on top of 4x4 skids? There are actually few good reasons to do that. One, because sheds are meant to be a movable or a portable structure, which means you can pull it around, drag it across the yard, lift it up, move it if you have to. The other good reason is that the joist sits on top of the skids. That way they're structurally secure and they don't have too much pressure against the nails or screws. If you don't have the skids, you end up needing LVL hangers all around. And the price of the LVL hanger, it's much higher than actually getting a couple skids underneath your shed. It is time to install the subflooring. I always add a bit of construction adhesive onto the framing before laying down the subflooring. When laying down the subflooring, Pay attention to the marks on the panel. Usually there's a side that should be facing up and most of the times is the side with the straight marks. After you lay the floor down, make sure not to move the panel too much, otherwise you may scrape off the adhesive you just installed. I used inch and 5 8 deck screws to secure the OSB onto the framing. You can also use nails if you have them. On the outside boards, I installed a screw every 6 inches. On the inside joist, I spaced them 12 inches on the center. And now that the floor is built, it's time to frame the walls. And I got a set of plans here that will help me do so. It also has a set of QR codes that will take me directly to the video. If you want to grab a set of plans like this or the free material list that we have, check the description below or visit everydayshed.com. Now, if you're ready to build the walls, there's a video right here. If you want to check out everything from beginning to end, there's a video right here. I hope you find this informative and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.